Welcome to Healing for the Soul podcast with this being season number four, episode number 59. I am your host, Robin Stoltman, and today I have my guest, May Renfro, who is a wife, a mother of soon to be 10 children, author, a blogger on the show talking about drawing near to God. And before we get started, remember every week I feature different guests to help you become the best version of yourself through different methods you may not have heard of or thought of. So let's get started. Thank you, May, for being here. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really excited about our conversation. I am too. So who do you like to work with and what's the best way to contact you just for our audience that are tuning in? Okay, okay. I work with um, women and uh, that's my main, you know, ministry. Yeah. And um, the best way to, you said, to contact me or to be like, to see my stuff. Yes. Like, I guess my website and blog. So that's um, just mayrenfro.com. Awesome. So you can find me like on, on Facebook. I have a, um, a page as well, May Renfro, and then on my YouTube channel, May Renfro. I will have to look both of those up so I can follow you. That's okay, the easiest sure. to do that is to follow each other. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. So who or what inspired you to do this work that you do? Um, this work or more like my passion. You know, I have a passion of, of giving hope and encouragement. And I would say, you know, yeah, God in, in, has inspired me or laid it on my heart to do. Um, but it's just really all started after the loss of our 14 year old son uh, in 2017. And, you know, just having gone through that and knowing what it was like, you know, for me, and then having that desire to then to reach out to others with the hope, encouragement and support for those going through loss or grief or just other seasons um, of difficulty, things in life. Because I know that um, many, you know, I heard of can take, have it really, really hard and, and for, for good reason, but can struggle, you know, for for years from that. And um, I just feel like in sharing my story and so that others can, you know, seeing the hope and the faith that I have going, having gone through that, um, that would just help them to hang on and to and to have hope. So really, that's my that's my inspiration um, for doing that. that inspires me. And that's, that's helpful because, yeah, child loss is one of those that it's not talked about. And it's like we need more. There, there's like, um, sometimes it, well, at least for me, like with my miscarriage, it feels like sometimes people are more of a push to hurry up and like you can have more or you can do more. And it's like you can't replace children. You can't replace people. You, you just can't. They're not replaceable. And I don't know if you dealt with that at all when your son had died. Um, yes, uh, for sure. Like what you said, I totally agree. You can't replace. And so, yes, I've had people that tried to kind of, yeah, push you or hurry you, you through and, and, and that, and it's, you can't, um, it, you really need to take the time to grieve and you don't get over it, but you can't get through it. God just enables you. And then it's something that is always with you because that, child is always a part of you it's it's like our son our 14 year son and then i've had miscarriages too and i mean they're just a follow it's a part of yeah of our life and they they always will hold that part um and, and so it's yeah people can be caring but can end up being just insensitive just thinking yeah that you could replace them when you never could never yeah um, I've, I've dealt with that. Sometimes I've come to the conclusion that the smartest people are the ones that are there, but they're silent. Like they literally mm -hmm. say nothing because it's like sometimes just being there and saying nothing, at least for me, that was more beneficial than people would start talking and, and saying things or like, um, I don't know, because I haven't had an older child die, but um, how does, how did that work for you when that happened, if you don't mind me asking, like, how did that, um, how did that happen? Like for like the anger with God, or did you get angry with God initially? Um, no, no, I, I never, I never did. Um, ex experience that I, I wondered why, I mean, but right off, I just had that, that peace and 
um, that only God can give. And just feeling that there was a plan and a purpose, even though I would I talk to my mom immediately after, like she wasn't right by us and she had to come from another province up there in Canada. I had told her, you know, crying that there's a, God's got a purpose. God's got a purpose. He's got a plan. And, and that's really what I felt and that helped me. And I wasn't angry, but I, I didn't know why. I still don't know why. And it's one of those things I could feel we don't need to know why. We just need to know God is in control and everything is in his hands. And what I felt with life and death to me is that I always felt that a person does not die before their time. You know, I just, and, and True. yeah. And that I really don't believe in accidents either. And it didn't see, you know, so even though we called that an accident, the, it was a four wheeler and he rolled, it rolled. Uh, it appeared that it, he was not playing around on the little embankment. It was just a, a little embankment and he was alone. We had to figure, you know, try to figure that out pieces together, how this could have happened. And it seemed like he just kind of got on the wrong angle apparently. And it rolled, um, rolled over and, and, um, and it pinned him underneath um, the autopsy showed that he died. Um, I guess very, very quickly said little to no trauma. So wow. that was a great relief to us feeling that, you know, to start finding things to be thankful for just really helped me to realize that he didn't suffer long. He probably went, it was hardly would have been calling for help. It was just, he was here and he was gone that, that quick. Um, so that those things help, but it, uh, I mean, of course it's hard when, yeah, like your son is healthy and happy and he goes out for a little uh, ride. He told me he's going over by the dugout to look for ducks. And then that was the last time I seen him, you know, I waved him out the door and, that all was good and then it was over like that but that's gotta be really hard i'm sorry for that for your loss because that's like i said i haven't experienced mm -hmm. that part of a loss but i mean like to me loss is still loss it still hurts either way yes yes for sure and thank you and yeah uh for sure it doesn't really matter how what way but loss is hard, very hard um, to journey through know. and try to make sense of yeah, because I know like there's some women that have tried to minimize their loss, you know, like for a miscarriage and said, well, at least I didn't have like an older child or, you know, like for a stillborn. And I'm like, no, loss is just loss and it hurts. Mm -hmm. well, to me, like child loss is like the hardest thing to overcome because it's like people that lose their spouse, they got names. They've got groups, you know, they've got people they can go hang around, they can go find a new spouse, they can go do those things. Yes. Granted, you still can't replace that spouse. But I mean, like, you still can go out and do something else. But like, child, that's like, that's your, that's your living, breathing. That's like your, that, that's your life. Yeah. Where you had dreams and hopes for them. And yes. yeah, and they're like, they're suddenly missing. So especially, well, he's over miscarriage. But like, I'm saying, especially, I mean, if, know a child that is sitting has their spot at your table and has um you know their bedroom and their bed and their you know and it's just suddenly that gaping missing person but, but in but in all all aspects of it for sure so yeah. how, how many children do you have that are living and then how many do you have that are in heaven because to me i count all of them but i'm just like, I know there's some people that don't, and I'm like, why would you not count them all? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Off the grid. So I have nine. That's what, well, be and with a new one that's due in July. So because 10 count, including my, my, my son, the 14 year old son, mm -hmm. um, nine living. And then so with him in heaven and then three miscarriages. So it'll be four in heaven oh, and wow. nine here. Yes. So you've got a lot more than 10 children total. Yes, I guess so. I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. That, that we'll all get to meet and join up together in heaven, right? Um, yes. Yeah, we'll that's, definitely that's so we'll have a real big family. Um, yeah. Sometimes we look around, we take with my oldest son, 21, is, is on his own um, working at a Bible camp now. And we sometimes like, man, there isn't very many of us. Like, what, we're, we're missing some. And so when there be some, we'll all be together up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, like I was mentioned a little bit before the show, I'm like, my near death experience, that was the one part that I, that was like the only part that I did. Like, I mean, like I didn't even get to see Jesus, but I got to see my daughters and I instantly oh. knew who they were. So I, oh, I, wow. do rem I do remember that part, but it's like the one that I had in October of 2021 for a miscarriage. I, I didn't get to see her at all yet because I haven't had another near death experience. Not that I want another one, but I'm just no. saying that at least I already know like what the other side is like and that they are waiting. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. 
that that helps yeah. to give you hope and to keep you going here doesn't it oh yeah it most definitely does because i'm like um that was like the biggest change for me at least when that happened is that it's like i gotta be good and it's not being good necessarily here but i mean like i don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize my going to heaven yeah the rest of the world can be crazy they can do their thing but i'm not going to do anything that's going to mess up my ability to go home to god yeah I'm for like, sure i'm not for gonna sure and i would say that i'm sorry I would say it's kind of a little gift or something that God gave you, allowed you to do that. Maybe he felt that you really needed that. You needed that to keep you going, um, you know, to help give you a peace of mind and and to be hopeful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely was. At least for me, it was. And then you homeschool all your children, too. Yes. So how much fun is that? Is that easy or is that hard? Um, <laughs> it's a lot of work. I It's it's a lot of work. Um. Yeah, so I've been homeschooling for, so I have ages um, 21 to two. So my oldest son graduated um, from homeschool in 2018. Um, and I started him the day after he turned five, after his fifth birthday, we started kindergarten. I mean, it was going, you know, since then. Uh, so 16 years of homeschooling. And wow. um, yeah, it's been quite a journey. I was homeschooled, you know, actually all the way. Like my mom homeschooled, but not everyone because she had some in school. And when she decided, made the decision that she wants to homeschool, I hadn't gone at all, neither of my older brother, but um, in the wild, seven, there's nine of us. I have seven brothers and uh, wow. a sister. So some of them had gone a little bit, but um, anyway, so yeah, that was something I wanted to do. So I kind of knew how homeschooling goes, but then I was the youngest and mom didn't have little ones under me. So when she helped, she had she worked with me, undivided attention, and she didn't try to keep a whole bunch of stuff going. And um, it was a good experience, I felt, being homeschooled, but yeah. yeah on the other end, me doing it. Um, and I had almost zero patients starting out and and didn't realize that a child doesn't really retain what they've learned in kindergarten to grade one to almost grade two. Like it's a wall, that's what I've noticed in between the years, in between the break, I mean, this, you stop for the summer and you start again. I assumed, well, he already learned all his sounds. He already knows how to read, so let's do this. And he didn't, my very first one. So we had quite a journey just learning that they, realizing they learn at their own pace and um, they forget things and that you have to have patience and they'll get it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a lot been of um, hard. One of the things, so that I learned along the way was just kind of letting them um, learn slower if that's what's necessary. And we have books to go by, but we don't entirely, you know, now I find actually we had like a hard season, really challenging season, then it'll be a little easier in the heart again. But now I, I've learned to really relax more. I don't push them so hard. And we do some what's called unschooling um, approach or method for like slash social studies. We actually don't use books. What's um, unschooling? Well, kind of books, but not like a curriculum. Like I have a book that I have for my, she's in sixth grade and I have a read in there and it's a lot about animals and um, maybe about the human body and, and stuff and just science -y stuff. Interesting, but it's not like a curriculum where she has answer questions and do all that stuff. Um, I let them use YouTube a lot for that. And I'm I, sorry? I was going to say, what is the unschooling that you mentioned? Oh, okay, so you haven't heard that much. Um, no, I haven't. And that is new to me, actually, in the last, well, a few years I've heard it. And at first I was like, what? That, that's crazy. You mean they, they actually are not doing school then? But no, what it is, they just don't kind of go by a set curriculum or maybe they use books maybe, but it's just like, go to the library, get books. What is your, like, what is your interest? Do you have an interest in certain animals? Go, you're going to get those books and study on that. You're going to go with nature. Um, that's kind of what I'm learning from that. Um, there's a more of a radical approach um, that is like parents don't have as much rules with them. And I don't want to, you know, get on that, but just, yeah, just the unschool, just, just letting the child kind of just like, like where their interest is and, and then focusing on those, uh, interests and then not going by, well, you're supposed to, you know, learn this now, this grade, not necessarily. They might learn in a different grade, a different age. Oh, yeah, that would make more sense. Me, yeah, I would have to have some of the rules. I mean, like, I can't, with all the kids that I got, you know, because like I said, mine are all six and under, and mm. um, that would never work. <laughs> no, that would for never sure. would never work to take and not um, have some sort of rule. Not to have order or, yeah. you know, or There's like, no way I, I can do that. Yeah, for sure.
that's that's what I you know we do in our home. We have protein and and um, times for thing you know so kind of like that. So they know what's expected of them and there's um, there's rules or has to be. Well, yeah, because um, then they get out into society and we're like, okay, now we know why you've got this problem or that problem. You need we need rules. So what initially brought you closer to God? Okay. Um, Oh, look on that. I'm sorry. I'm just, I was trying oh, to look no, through my fine. notes. Um, but it was just through my my um parenting through the years. I mean, when I was young, I love the Lord. I grew up in a godly home and I always wanted to serve God and everything, but I didn't really realize what you know what's entailing. You just grow, right? Through the years. That's where our yeah. walk is supposed to be. Ever growing, ever drawing closer. You don't really feel you got to where you're there. And no, you just, you know, you keep having that desire and keep seeking after um, God more. So definitely the challenges of, of parenting, the challenges of being a wife, yes. um, you know, pretty much drives you to closer because you just can't make it without without that. Um, and then just and losing my uh, my son. Um, Sorry, I was trying to find my no my notes I had on that. But yeah, just really after losing my son, um, that's that's what just really drew me closer and just realizing um my need for him more and that I I can't um um yeah, I can't I can't make it without him and, and, and just seeing how much he his presence and everything was so real in my in my life and i guess those all, all those things helped to um strengthen my walk and um and realized areas that we needed to grow in especially after losing us and i guess i started checking more and as the children started getting a bit older so when they were little i, I kind of thought oh yeah we serve the lord but you know but then when you, your children start growing and you're they're pattering mm -hmm. after you pretty quick they're mimicking you they're they're picking up your habits and then you have to start checking your habits and realizing the, the things you're saying and doing, you know, um, then that helped uh, for sure. And then with my losing my son to just questioning, you know, are we really doing what, what God wants to do? And I didn't mean that, that we lost him because we weren't doing something right. No, but just, you know, just, it just helps you to question, um, you know, just soul searching. Like, like, is there something more that we, we need to be doing, changing our lifestyle a bit, um, really trying, you know, that we, are we evangelizing like we should or, um, really reaching out to others as we should and, and as our children really learning and, and growing in God and are we implementing it as much as we should. And then that, so I guess that's what um, really helped to, to strengthen my walk and draw me closer uh, from my relationship. Yeah. Which that helps a lot. Cause um, yeah, I think I'm a hundred percent sure all of us, regardless whether we grew up in church or not, Mm -hmm. I'm hundred percent sure all of us question at some point, you know, like, what are we, what are we doing here on earth? And then like, why does God take, you know, certain people or why does he do certain things? At least for me, that's what it was when I miscarried, I was very angry. And then I realized, well, I can either go back to the path that I was, which was when I was away from God, or I can just be like, you know what? Nope. I'm going to go closer to God. And that's what I did. I went closer to him. Like what you had mentioned, you said, yes. you know, going closer to him and realizing, okay, is there more? Is there soul searching? Like what you had said. For sure. Yeah, I think it, it could either kind of go either way. It could either drive us away, especially if we end up blaming God and just wondering why he allowed it. Like, if you're a good God, why did you allow us in it? Um, that we just really can't go that, you know, we really have to no. just realize that. His, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, as it says in Isaiah, and just um, that he's got a plan and and, um, and then draw and then draw closer. Yeah, and do that soul searching, like you mentioned. Yeah, because I know like there's many times I've yelled at God. I'm just like, I'll. There's days I get so frustrated, so overwhelmed with like everything going on that I'll be in my vehicle and I'll just start screaming and crying and like, God, just help me. I need your help. Mm -hmm. And then he never sends help the way I would like it. <laughs> you know, like what well, way I think that I need the help. He always sends it the way that I'm like, really? And he's like, no, this is what you need. Mm. I don't know if you noticed that with God at all. Like he sends help, not in the way you exactly think that it would happen. For sure. 
Um, then he probably gives you a peace and a comfort, right? Yes, it does every time. And I'm like, how does that work? I wanted this, but then God sent this and I'm like, okay. That he knew what you really needed. Yes. Right. And, and he's drawing, I'm sorry, he's drawing you closer to himself because that's what he wants. He wants us to come closer, closer, you know, more intimate relationship. Yeah. And then like, I'm in, I'm using my Bible every day, you know, to hear what the word, not just like with the hypnotherapy, but I mean, like I'm using it every day. Cause I'm like, I need help. I'm just going to go for where I need to go. I, I have self-help books, but I'm like, forget the self-help books. I just need to go to my Bible. I'll find my help that I need there at that time. Mm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you'll find it. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you find um, your way in helping women draw near to God in the work after your so, son had died? I guess in my, just and with me coming, you know, closer mm -hmm. me feeling that need and I realized that, well, that's what we all need. Right. So, I mean, it, for myself, and then I want to try to draw other women closer, um, because that's what's going to get us through these hard times, not knowing, just knowing about God or knowing about the Bible and, and a lot of things about the Bible or, or the truths and stuff, but really making it intimate, having that relationship and that connection. Um, you know, and I, so I do that, um, help women draw closer just by sharing my own experiences and story and, um, you know, and then helping them, um, and, and see their need and just sharing what God has done in my life and how he has been present and real. And then when, when I, um, and when I was most desperate, when I most needed him and when I shared that, then it, I it just, I think it helps, you know, um, and through my own experience. I think that they can see how it's so important to have that that close relationship. Like I said, it's not about you can know, but it, that's not what's going to help you um, get through these times. Um, and it's spending time in word and prayer, and that's how we, we grow. And like you said, spending time in you know, word and prayer and encouraging them in their faith. Um, and just encouraging them to, to put off things, you know, that isn't helping us. And we can end up with a lot of things in our life, you know, that just isn't help, isn't nourishing, isn't growing, isn't, isn't drawing us uh, closer. And I, and I do this through my writing, my books, uh, my blog, my YouTube channel. And then speaking is of opportunity. I haven't really got to do a lot of speaking bit um, in anywhere, but that's, that's what I want to do more of. Um, I'd like to do it in person more than just you know, getting on, uh, I love these opportunities on podcasts, but, and on YouTube channel, my book, um, you know, but, and by sharing my faith and hope in Jesus, I think it draws women to desire that in their own life. You know, when they see your strength and you, you've shared your story and, and they see that, I, I think that, um, that, that, that should help. I, I, I teach that it's really not, there's no separation, you know, between our spiritual lives and our, you know, the rest of our lives. Like, I feel like it's, it is our life and it's, it's who we are. Um, and so I think that's important. And maybe my last thought, you know, on that, that part is that there's just so many things, uh, in life and distractions that, that try to pull us away and try to get, take our time and our focus and our attention off of God. Um, um, the, you know, that takes each of us to be very purposeful and intentional. And, and, and again, that's, that's the reason that needs to be our life and no, no separation there. Um, you know, it keeps, uh, Okay, it keeps us, yeah, we need to be intentional about um, bringing that back and bring and keeping uh, the right focus. We are really fighting a war, you know, um, and then we need that uh, to be fully equipped with that spiritual armor that it mentions in Ephesians 6. Um, you know, it says that we don't, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spiritual, spiritual um, powers of wickedness in high I was, places. I was going to say, I'm glad that you've mentioned that because I know, um, like with my hypnosis and the other things that I that I do, we're always um, taught about how we have to um, block our energy from like other people if they have negative energy. Because mm -hmm. you do run into people that have negative energy on them. But I'm like, I've noticed that. I'm like, I've tried the other tools, but that mm -hmm. one from Ephesians about putting the armor of God on, like yes. the shield of the, uh, I think it's like the shield of I know it's a breast put the breast plate of righteousness. Yes. And then I'm trying to remember. I did like motions at one time. That's how I remembered them. Yeah. Um, I don't the shield, 
a favor. No, them that well just offhand either. Hmm? Um, your feet shod with the, uh, with peace. Um, I know the sword is the word. Yes. The and then the and then the prayer word. is is part of that too. Yeah. Um, there's a the shield like, of faith. Yeah, that's, I remember the shield of faith and the belt of truth. That one. Yeah, the belt of the belt is the truth. Yeah. Because I remember the helmet of salvation. So I remember that one. I actually did hand motions so I would oh. remember the different. Oh, yeah. Um ways out of Ephesians because I could not remember them and then I started doing different hand motions like on my head the helmet of salvation um the belt of truth and then um the sword of righteousness and then like the no that was the breastplate of righteousness mm -hmm. I, like, I was remembering it doing it that way but I'm like that's what helps me protect from other people out in the world yes yes like, for sure I and then that, that tools and I'm like, it doesn't work. I need my, yeah, I need my Ephesians. Yeah, put that that armor on. I love how truth is one of them, and then prayer. Yeah. You know, we forget the power of prayer and the protection of prayer that it brings, right? Yes, and you know the the funny thing with prayer is that um, I have a saying in my Reiki room that it says. Prayer is less about changing the world and more about changing ourselves. Because mm. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I'm like every time I pray and I ask God for something, he gives me something else, but it changes me instead. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, we relate to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I know you have a book. What is it called and what is your hopes for your book? Okay. My book is... um. um Holding on to hope. That's the name of it. And um, my hopes is um, that I just really want to, um, yeah, see it give hope and encouragement to someone and and to help strengthen their walk. Like, as I, I like the first, I start out with a chapter of um, it's titled "Losing Clayton." So I go through how we lost our son, and then um, then just it's, it's blog entries. Actually, I wrote this book you know, on my blog because oh, really? I was blogging. And so after losing our son, I just started writing. You know, I wrote down April 19th, 2017. That was the day we lost him. And, um, and then just uh, entries. So, so things that was on my heart and mind, things I was going through, things that, that my emotions, whatever, I would pour that out and say, this is how, you know, if you're going through this, this is how to help you. Here's a favorite verse that has helped me um, or a little piece of a song or a, a quote or something. And so that's how it's, it's put together. And so it's not even really such a book on grief and loss as is, it is well, sharing our story. And then it's more, I call it my book of hope um, to give give hope. And just so, um, yeah, someone can, can really see that it's a life lived in God that, that keeps us going. Not that I, you know, and it's not me, it's not my strength, not at all. That the strength that God has given me um, and just have yeah, them. I just give it all to God. It's the work that he he's done. And then that he's enabled me to be able to share this to, with someone else. Um, it just, and it's really, um, it's humbling, but really it's really, yeah. Honoring. It's really special. It means a lot uh, to me. And that's my hope is that they find God in there. They find um, hope and they find a reason to keep holding on to that hope. That's what I call it holding on to hope just to keep hanging, just keep hanging on. Um, I, I love the verse. Um, I have it on the back of my, um, so there's my book. Um, on the back of my book, um, I've got a little, ver my, it's like my theme verse. It's Romans 15, 13 it says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Um, so I guess what I encourage is to keep holding on to that. And we serve a God. He's a God of hope. He's called, uh, he says a God of comfort. He refers to a God of peace. Um, there's different things that he's referred to, but, um, so that's, you know, I just want them to find that hope. And I know that anyone can have that same hope and the same peace uh, that I have. And that's what I hope that I'm, I bring them to. And I, I uh, bring them, you know, invite them to a relationship uh, in God. Just throughout the book, in the back, I actually have an invitation to Jesus. I have a prayer that they can pray. Uh, I have lots of verses um, in the back to kind of guide them to, uh, to that. That helps uh, that decision. That, that helps out. Because I know sometimes... It's like, um, at least for me, it's always helpful to have like where are all of the different verses for what I need at that time. Mm -hmm. That helps out a lot. So when you're 
when you added those, that helps. I'm, I'm sure that's going to help more people, more women be drawn closer to God by having that, that reference yes. of where to go to. It's just, it's just like that point of reference of like, okay, where is home? Where's home for me in the Bible? Okay. Yeah. Um, at least that's the way I'm thinking of it. I'm sorry? I said at least that's the way that I'm thinking of it. Okay. Yes. Yes, hopefully, you know, and I, yeah, I have high hopes for this book. Um, I just don't know what, you know, what all God's going to do with it. Um, I'm really trying to think of places and people's, you know, I can get it out to different people that need it. Um, but yeah, like I have an invitation to Christ in the back. I have what's called the Romans Road to Salvation, because in the book of Romans it really tells us kind of step by step um, how to um, just to, to realize your need that we've all sinned, you know, come short of the glory of God that he, you know, what he's died on the cross for our sins and to, um, to receive that and then it's then you've got to to live it out though it's got to become your personal thing not just say okay i made this commitment um made the confession no it like now you now we live it out and we just got to keep desiring god and keep desiring more and more of him um you know we got to want him more than we want heaven some people i mean it seems like we can end up wanting heaven almost more than we want god we got to want god and that means we're gonna have to surrender and lay down our life and, and pick up um you know his and not adding him to our life but making him our life i guess would be maybe the way to put it mm -hmm. i like how you put it though oh. because it's it is one of those like yeah there's people that focus on going to heaven and me i'm like well i already know that i'm guaranteed that spot you know as long as i keep doing what i've been doing i know that i, I know that i'm going there but i'm like i seriously can't wait to see jesus there's days in my and there's days in my mind I have a conversation with myself. I'm like, I don't know when I get to heaven. That's why I love that song. I can only imagine. Oh yeah. I love yeah. that song. And I told my children, they're little of course, but I told my husband and I thought about it just so nobody forgets. I'm like, when it is my turn to go home, I want that song played. I really, really do. Because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to want to hug Jesus first. Mm -hmm. Or if I just want to, if I'm just going to be like, I'm just going to stay under there and be like, wow, I finally made it home. Yeah. Yeah. We can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> can we? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I get goosebumps and I get all like, I get teary eyed when I think about going home. Cause it's like, I've already seen home, but I've been like, to, to be there, it's just like where there is no pain. Like I said, when I had my near death, it was just like, this is the most beautiful gift that I had gotten for that. The little tiny bit, I don't even have a clue how long it was because time really doesn't exist. But I mean, okay. like, it's just, yeah. It's one of those things that I'm like, yeah. I don't really have any words for that. Yeah. But then, sure. like, when, like, when do we get to go home? That'll be the nice part because we all get to go home. Some of mm -hmm. us do, some of us don't, though. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, be careful what you get when you're on Earth. Get yeah. one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, that are in Jesus. Um, yeah. And then it says that this world and in this home is temporary that we're just passing through. This is really not our, our home and we can end up getting caught up in that. Um, that yeah, that's why we've got to keep just getting our focus back to where it is. And that is our home. That's what we're, we're waiting, we're waiting for. And uh, just to make sure that we're doing what God wants us to be doing while we're here and while we are gifted with time. Time is a gift, I feel. And, it uh, is. Life. Life is a miracle. Nothing short of a miracle. Mm -hmm. That is very, very true. Mm -hmm. I've appreciated this conversation with you, May, very much. Well, Let thank me... you. I'm glad that I was here. I got to do this. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure all of our listeners, whether you are tuning in or whether you are viewing our conversation that May and I had about drawing near to God, I really hope that it helps you draw near to God, not just in the good times and the bad times, but I'm just hoping that it really draws everybody near to God because we seriously need him now more than ever with the way things are going in the world. It's a better time to do it now until you're on your deathbed because you're going to get one or the other. Yes. Insane. You will get yeah. one or the other. You, you, you're going to choose it now and live that life out, live it out. Don't be the one hour ones that I talk about. Don't be a one hour Christian on Sunday and think you're going to be saved because it does not work that way. You have to live out your life. Actually live it out. Be like God every day, the best you can, to the best of your abilities. 
Thank you, May, for being here. I really appreciate your time and your energy and our audience as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again. Yeah. I really enjoyed it.